Hey there, in this video, we're going to be making this quick and simple tic-tac-toe game using Python. This was one of the first assignments I ever did when I took intro to programming, so I thought it'd make for a fun and quick tutorial. You won't need any external software to follow along, just head over to replit.com and sign up for an account. A link to replit will be in the description below. Once you've created an account, you should see a screen like this. If you don't, go ahead and make a new project and make sure you have Python selected as your language. Alright, so now we're ready to get started. In case you forgot how to play tic-tac-toe, we're going to have a 3x3 grid with 9 different spots. Two players, one using X's and the other using O's, will fill up those spots one turn at a time in an attempt to get 3 in a row. This can be achieved vertically, horizontally, or on the diagonal. If the board gets filled up but neither player has 3 in a row, then we'll call this a tie. Now that you're refreshed on all the rules, let's go ahead and start our program. Let's start by drawing the board onto the console, and for now, all it's going to be is a string. This string is going to be comprised of the numbers 1 through 9, each separated by a bar, and then after three numbers, we put the new line character to move it down to the next row. If we go ahead and print it, you'll see that it looks like what we think it should. Right now, we just have the numbers 1 through 9 hard-coded into the board, but what we're eventually going to want to do is allow the player to pick a number from 1 through 9, and then we're going to replace it with an X or O, depending on whose turn it is. We're then going to overwrite the board and print it again. Since we're going to have to print the board multiple times, let's go ahead and make a helper function that we can easily call. I'm going to go ahead and click on the Files tab, Add a File, and we're going to call it helpers.py. We can then go ahead and drag this here, and close this so we have more room to work with, but we can access both files really easily. Inside helpers.py, we're going to go ahead and define a new function, which I'm going to call draw board. From here, all we really need to do is take this code, cut it, and place it inside our new function, making sure that all the indents are set properly. We can then go back to our main file and call this function by doing from helpers import draw board, which is the name of our function. Now drawing our board is as simple as calling this function, and you'll see that if I run it again, we're going to get the exact same board. With that working, let's address how we can update the board so that the players can draw X's and O's onto it. We need a way to keep track of whether an X or an O is placed on each spot, and thankfully, there's a handy dandy data structure that will let us do just that. We're going to go ahead and use a dictionary. If you've never seen a dictionary before, the idea is pretty much the same as a unique website URL or scanning a barcode. We have some sort of unique identifier, which we're going to call a key, and that key can be used to access and or modify some data. In the case of our spots dictionary for the game board, the numbers 1 through 9 are going to go ahead and map to the strings 1 through 9, and these are the strings that you see printed here onto the game board. What we can then do is modify our draw board function so that rather than using a hard-coded value, we're going to go ahead and use the values that are present in the spots dictionary. So if the player selects one of these spots, we can update the value to be an X or an O. Let's first modify our function so that it takes in an input, and in this case, it's going to take in the spots dictionary. Now there's a couple different ways we could use the dictionary to draw the board, but what we're going to do here is use an f-string. f-strings are essentially strings that we can place variables inside of. In this case, the variable is going to come from the dictionary. What we're going to do is go through our numbered spots, 1 through 9, and see what value is currently being held at that spot. To call a value from a dictionary, we just write the name of the dictionary, and then inside brackets, we're going to put the key, or like I said in this case, the keys are going to be the numbers from 1 through 9. If we want to use the value of the dictionary inside of our string, what we do is call the dictionary first, and then surround it with curly brackets. And what the curly brackets do is let the f-string know that what's inside is a variable. We'll go ahead and create an f-string for each row, and then we can put them all together by just placing them all inside parentheses, like such. We'll then just print it like before. Now all we have to do is go back to our main code and enter spots inside of the draw board function. And if I go ahead and run this again, you'll see that it draws the same board. Since I'm using a dictionary now, I have a way to update the board. So for example, let's say I wanted to change the value at spot one, to X, and I can go ahead and do that using this line right here. If I go ahead and print the board a second time, you'll see that the second time around we have an X where the one used to be. Now that we understand how the board is gonna change, let's go ahead and think about how we can have the player interact with it. Let's start by thinking about how many times the players are gonna need to update the board. The short answer is that we don't know. Some games are gonna end really quickly, while others are gonna take the maximum amount of turns. The best course of action here is going to be to use a while loop. So let's go ahead and make a variable called playing, and we're going to set it equal to true. Now let's go ahead and define our loop. So we'll say while playing, let's go ahead and draw the board. 
Once the board has been drawn, let's go ahead and get some input from the player, and we can do that using the input function. And then whatever they give us, we're gonna go ahead and store it in the choice variable. Now some of you may be cringing in your seat right now because our while loop doesn't have a terminating condition. If we choose to run this, then what we're gonna get is an infinite loop and be very sad. So let's go ahead and add a condition. We'll say if the player inputs Q, then we'll go ahead and set playing to false and this will end our loop. If we go ahead and run this code, you can see that it's gonna draw the board. And if I give it some input, it's just gonna keep drawing the board until I eventually enter Q, in which case the program will terminate. One thing we're gonna to wanna to immediately fix is that we don't want the board to be drawn every time the player makes a turn. Thankfully for us, Python's built-in OS module has a solution for us. Let's go ahead and put the code to clear our screen before we draw the board. First, we're gonna go ahead and call the OS module and inside the OS module, we'll call the system function. For the system function, we're gonna pass in this argument. In Python, we call this the ternary operator, but basically what it's doing is it's checking to see what your operating system is so it can pass in the right command to clear the screen. So now let's go ahead and run this code. And now when I enter inputs, you'll see that we don't have multiple boards. Now let's work on the next step. If the player enters a number from one through nine, we wanna put an X or a no on that spot. We're gonna need a way to keep track of whose churn it is. So I'm gonna make a new variable churn and equal it to zero. Let's head back to helpers.py and I'm gonna make a new function, which I'll call check churn. How we're gonna do this is we're gonna keep track of what churn it is. And from there, we're gonna determine whether it's an O or an X, depending if it's even or odd. We can do this using the modulo operator. And if you've never seen this before, let me quickly explain how it works. Let's think about eight divided by four, which equals two. What this really means is that we can subtract four from eight a total of two times, and we'll be left with nothing. Now let's think about nine divided by four. We can subtract four two times, but we can't subtract it again without going negative. In this case though, we have one left over. So we say that nine divided by four is two remainder one. What the modulo operator is doing is giving us that remainder. So if we divide an even number by two, it's gonna have nothing left over, so the remainder is gonna be zero. But if we divide an odd number by two, we're always gonna have one left over. And if you don't believe me, feel free to try it with a couple numbers yourself. So using that little mathematical trick, what we're gonna go ahead and do is mod the churn number by two. If it's equal to zero, then we know we have an even churn, and we're gonna go ahead and return an O. Otherwise, we're gonna return an X for an odd numbered churn. Now let's go ahead and go back to main.py and call this function from our helpers.py the same way we did with draw board. Let's go ahead and add two lines of code to the bottom of our loop. First, we're gonna to wanna to increment the churn by one. And then next, we're gonna to wanna to pass churn into our check churn function, which will return either an X or an O, depending on whose churn it is. And we're gonna replace the value of whatever our player gives us, the number one through nine, on the spots dictionary with that X or O. Since the input function in Python is always gonna return a string, I'm gonna go ahead and convert it to a number by using the int function. We'll then go ahead and use that number as our key like we did before in our spots dictionary and make the appropriate change. Now let's go ahead and run the code and see what happens. I'm gonna enter numbers one through nine and you can see that it's actually working, it's keeping track of the churn correctly by alternating from X's and O's. Playing around a bit more, however, you'll see that there's a couple bugs that we need to address. Firstly, there's nothing stopping me from overriding a spot that's already taken. So for example, if I put the number six and enter, you'll see that I overrode an O and put an X there. And another concern would be what happens if the player enters something that's not a number one through nine. As an example, if I put the input A, then what's gonna happen is the whole program's just gonna crash. Rather than assuming our users are just gonna play nice, let's go ahead and add some error handling. And then what we can also do is give some feedback to the users. So if we get an invalid input, we can tell them exactly what's wrong. I'll start by cutting these bottom two lines so I can use them later. Next, let's go ahead and attach an else if to that if statement. The logic here is that we're only gonna update the board if the player's input meets certain conditions. Firstly, we wanna make sure that the player's input is an actual integer. We can do this using a function from the string library is digit. So we'll call str.isDigit and we'll pass in the player's input. This will only return true if the player inputs a non-decimal number. But since we only have nine spots on the board, we only want the player to enter a number from one through nine. Here's one of the ways that we can do this. We'll convert the player's input to an integer and then see if it's one of the keys inside the spots dictionary. And we can do that using in spots. By joining these together with an and statement, it means that both of these conditions have to be true. Otherwise, this branch will not run. This takes care of the problem of a player entering a number that's not one through nine, but we still have the problem that they can override each other's spots. Let's add another if statement inside our ill self branch. 
Since we already know the player gave us a value from 1 through 9, let's go ahead and see what's actually at that spot in the dictionary. We'll know that the spot is taken if there's already an X or O there, and we can check that using our value in the spots dictionary in curly brackets X comma O. If the spot has not been taken, then we'll proceed, otherwise we're going to exit the branch. In the case that all three of these conditions are satisfied, we know that the player gave us a valid input. So we will increment the churn and then replace the value of the spot's dictionary with either an X or an O, depending on the spot that they picked. And for the sake of clarity, I've gone ahead and added comments detailing everything we just did. Now let's go ahead and test our code. Putting an invalid input like A is just going to cause the board to do nothing because it's just rejecting our input. If I then put 1, it's going to correctly put an X there. And if I try to overwrite it with player 2's churn by putting another 1, you can see that it does nothing because it rejects it, but if I put 2, then it's working as intended. So the board is correctly rejecting invalid input. But it's pretty bare bones at the moment as it doesn't display much information and let the user know if their input was invalid or not. With enough invalid inputs, it can be pretty confusing on whose churn it actually is. Let's add a bit of functionality to our program to address these issues. First, let's go under the draw board function and add a simple print statement that will tell us whose churn it is. Keeping in mind that player 1 is x and player 2 is o, we can go ahead and take the churn and mod it by 2 the same way we did in the check churn function. This will be 0 when the game first starts, so we'll go ahead and add 1, turn it into a string, and then the whole thing will be player 1's churn, pick your spot or press Q to quit. On the next turn, then churn mod 2 will evaluate to 1, and if we add 1 to 1, then we'll get 2, so the whole thing will evaluate to player 2's churn. Now if we go ahead and run our program, you'll see that the churns are in fact updating correctly and are alternating correctly. As long as I put in a valid input, if I put in an invalid input, then it's just going to do nothing. Now we need to tell a player who picked an invalid spot that they need to pick another one. Now we pretty much already wrote the code that will tell us if the player's input was valid or not. So all we really need to do is create a variable that will keep track if the player's input makes it in here, and if it doesn't, then we know it's invalid and we can tell the player. Keeping in mind that we only increment the churn variable if a valid input was given, let's go ahead and make another variable, which I'm going to call previous churn, and we're going to equal it to negative 1. Now let's head back into our loop, and under the draw board function, I'm going to write the following code. The first thing we're going to do is check if the previous churn is equal to the current churn. Now for the first time around, this is always going to be false, because churn is equal to zero, and previous churn is equal to negative one. The trick here is that after we check, we're gonna set the value of previous churn equal to churn. Now keeping in mind that churn is only gonna ever change when we actually have a valid input, this is actually gonna evaluate to true if we have an invalid input, and we'll go ahead and print the message that an invalid spot was selected and that the user needs to pick a different one. With the code written, let's go ahead and run our program to see if it's working. If I put in an invalid input, let's say 10, you'll see that we get a message that's saying an invalid spot was selected and we need to pick another. If I put a valid one in, then it'll work. If I try that again, if I put A, we get an invalid spot. And if I put a valid one, you'll see that it's working. Our board is now just missing one key piece of functionality. We need to check if the game has ended, whether that be through a tie or if someone gets three in a row. We will think about the three in a row situation first. And to handle that, we're going to go back to helpers.py. Let's create a new function, and we're going to call it check for win, and it's going to take in the spots dictionary. We have a total of eight winning conditions we need to check for, those being three horizontal, three vertical, and two on the diagonal. What we can then do is just check three spots at a time, going horizontal, vertical, and diagonal, and if we see that three of those spots are equal, then we know somebody has won as they got three in a row. For the sake of readability, we'll chunk it up into three different categories. So first, we're going to create an if statement, and we're just going to check all the horizontal cases using the spots dictionary, and if any one of these are true, we're going to return true. We can then do the same thing for the vertical cases using an else if, and then just checking the appropriate spots. And then lastly, we just have our last two diagonal cases, and then if none of these are true, we're going to go ahead and return false because nobody's won yet. This function is a little lengthy, so I'll give you a moment to pause the video and copy down the code. This function is complete, so now we can run back over to our while loop, and let's go ahead and implement it. Let's scroll up for a quick moment, and I'm going to declare another variable called complete and set it to false. And let's also not forget to import our check for win function that we just created. Now let's scroll down and dive back into our loop. We're going to want to see if somebody won the game at the very end of the loop. We'll call our check for win function, and if this returns true, that means somebody won. In that case, we're going to set the playing variable equal to false, 
but we're going to set the complete variable equal to true. The reason we have the complete variable is that we want a way to keep track of whether three in a row was obtained or the game ended in a tie. And speaking of ties, let's go ahead and handle that situation as well. We know we have nine spots on the board, and since we started counting from zero, if our churn variable exceeds eight, then we know all the spots have been filled and we'll end the loop. Our tic-tac-toe game is now pretty functional. We just need to print the results to the player. So let's go ahead and take care of that outside of the loop. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna draw the board one last time so that we can account for any updates that were made before the game ended. Now let's print the outcome of the game. If complete is equal to true, that means somebody got three in a row. So we can use check churn to see who made the winning move. If it was X, then we'll say player one wins. And if it was O, then we'll say player two wins. And we can do this using this if else statement. If complete is not true, then we know the game ended in a tie, so we'll just print that there was no winner. And to end things off, let's just go ahead and print thanks for playing to let the user know that we care about him. Now let's run our code one more time and make sure everything's working. Let's test one of our horizontal cases. We'll do one, four, two, five, three, and you can see that X won by getting three in a row at the top, and we correctly print out that player one wins. Picking a vertical case, we put one, two, seven, five, nine, eight, and we'll see that player two, the O's, one in the middle right here. Testing a diagonal, we put one, three, two, five, four, seven, and we can see that the O's one in the diagonal. Finally, we can go ahead and create a tie situation by filling up the board to verify that that's working as well. And you can see that if the board is filled and we don't see three in a row, it prints no winner and thanks for playing. And with that, our little tic-tac-toe game is complete. Thank you to anyone who made it all the way to the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I hope you all take care and stay safe.